Need an interface? Choose the pre's the pros use. Focusrite. No gimmicks. Just 25 years of mic pre excellence. We're here on day two of Mesa with Kevin from Unity Audio. Now, Unity Audio is a very well-known distributor of audio products in the UK, but just occasionally they take it into their heads to build something themselves. And one of those things is this speaker called the Rock, which um, is no frivolous name, as the front panel is actually made of reconstituted granite, I believe. Uh, it was made from a dewpot material called Corian, which is a uh, man-made uh, resin-based uh, composite. But we chose it because of its uh, acoustic qualities. Uh, the main reason being, well one of the main reasons being that it has a very low uh, resonant frequency and it's also extremely strong and has uh, it's, it's a lot of density, high mass material. Um, so it's very rigid. And we've bonded it to a, um, a wooden baffle as well. So the front wooden baffle is something like approaching 24 mil thick, which is probably a bit overkill, but we wanted to do. And you've also got some kind of system which links this to the back baffle as well, having you to tension the whole cabinet together. That's right, yeah, the, the cabinet, just talk about the cabinet for a second, it's designed by a guy called Kevin Van Green, who's, uh, his background is studio acoustics and studio design. Um, so we cho he chose to use a plywood uh, material, birch, uh, Baltic birch plywood, instead of MDF. Uh, the cabinet brace, got an ingenious cabinet bracing system, as you, as you mentioned. It's actually two aluminium rods that run from the Corian, screwed into the Corian, run into the back amplifier plate, so that when you screw the amplifier back panel in, it tensions the two rods and pulls the whole two, two sides together like this. The other thing I was going to say is that um, it's unusual and that this is a sealed box design, it's not a ported cabinet. Exactly, yeah, we wanted to do something different on uh, different, different levels and one of them was to do a sealed cabinet, so no, no ports. Uh, and the reason for being is that um, with, with, a, with a ported design, it's tuned to that one frequency and then it'll drop off once it starts rolling off, it'll drop off at 24 dB per octave. Whereas this design means that you have a much truer bottom end response. Uh, it's tighter, it's, um, it's, it'll extend down lower, and this will start to roll off at 12 dB per octave. So it's, it's a more gradual tail off, uh, but and a more accurate tail off as well. Okay, so tell us about the choice of drivers and amplifiers. I mean, looking at this, it looks like a ribbon tweeter design. Yeah, it is. They're both European um, produced components from the same company, and this is a folded ribbon design uh, with a frequency response of up to 50 kilohertz. Uh, the base driver we've chosen this base driver due to, it's a, it's a pulp fibre construction with a 0.2 millimetre aluminium foil put over the top, it's chemically bonded to this. And you'll notice there's no, no dust cap, which means it won't have any uh, phase, um, phase uh, errors that inherently happen when you have a dust cap in the middle of the, of the cone, so you, you do away with that uh, problem. Uh, it's also very fast, very light, it has a, a good uh, excursion, a 15 millimeter excursion capability. Hmm. And driving this is what kind of amplifier system? Well, driving this is, this is a real uh, coup for us and I'm very pleased to be associated with uh, Tim DeParavicini from Esoteric Audio Research, a company called EAR. Um, he is probably one of the best amplifier guys in the business, more, more known for very expensive hi-fi amplifiers and we, we approached him about the project and he was really happy to get involved. So he's designed a, true, a truly custom amplifier design for us, for this cabinet, for the dimensions of this cabinet, for these two given drivers. Um, and it's a discrete design, there's no chips, there's no IECs in this, which I, I don't think anyone in the professional monitor manufacturing is, is doing right now. Um, and we're still in the prototype stage, but the initial listing tests have been very, very favourable. Uh, and it can only get better. Tim's going to spend the next two or three weeks tinkering and tweaking and refining it. So when do you hope to have it finished to the point that you can actually sell it to actually, someone? Well, a oh, million dollar question, Paul. Um, I'm, I'm really hoping it, it could be a couple of months. It might be slightly longer than that. I can't see it being any quicker than that. Sometime in the summer anyway. I'm, I'm hoping. It might be a bit longer than that. I, I, we, we don't want to rush it. Um, We've got, to, we've got a long way in a short space of time, but now we do some fine tuning just to really hone that. 
Have you got any idea which price point you're going to pitch it at? Yeah, it should be um, around about £1,200, £1,250 for the pair, um, including VAT. So pretty, pretty. So, so that's quite price. a busy market sector. Yeah, we, we're pitching it right in there with some of the other obvious candidates. But I think um, we're doing something really different. We didn't want to just be a, another company producing another black box. We've thought about every single aspect of it, and um, hopefully it's going to set us apart from Well, we look forward to trying it. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you very much. Sound awesome.